This overlooked skill could keep you in high demand and your bootcamp probably didn't even teach it to you. Today, I wanna to share with you three reasons why you need to develop this skill specifically. And then we're gonna talk about how you can develop this skill so that you can become a developer who is in high demand, not just now, but for years and years and years to come. So let's dive in. Hey, Junior Devs, Dev Mentor Dave here, helping you bridge the gap from learning to code to launching a successful career. As always, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section below as I read all of them and try to respond to as many as I can. When you go through training, whether it's a boot camp or whether it's watching tutorial videos or whatever it is that you're doing to become a junior developer or to grow as a junior developer, all that training typically has the same problem. It doesn't teach you this very specific skill. Yeah, you can get a lot of training, you can get a lot of knowledge, you can get a lot of information, you can even get a lot of experience developing things, but this is really the most important thing. So what is it that we're talking about today? Well, we're talking about the ability to jump into existing code, understand it quickly, and then move forward and, and add to it or take from it and, and fix it and do all the things that you need to do within that code. See, the problem is most training programs like boot camps will teach you a lot of information. They'll teach you how to, how to do certain things, but they kind of start from scratch. And because they're starting from scratch, they're teaching you new concepts. They kind of teach you to build things fresh from the very start. And so everything that you work on really is a brand new project. It's kind of like a greenfield project. You're starting from scratch. There's no, there's nothing that, that is depending on this code. There's nothing that's already been built. There might be examples for you to look at, but you're not jumping into somebody else's code. And today I wanna to explain to you why it's important that you develop that skill specifically if you want to be a developer long-term. Now I was very lucky in my first project, my first paid project anyway, uh, was a Greenfield project. It was a project that started completely from scratch. I was able to do everything that I wanted to do. I got to pick the database. I got to pick the backend software, the front end software. I got to write everything the way that I wanted to do it from scratch. And it was wonderful. A and then I got a real job, not as a freelancer, but I got a real job and almost everything that I touched at that first job was somebody else's code. Either I was fixing somebody else's website or I was working on somebody else's application that they had already started developing or that they had had somebody else develop and they brought to our company. And to be honest with you, for the last 15 plus years, probably about 10% of the work that I have done has been on greenfield projects or been on brand new projects where I've actually been able to start basically from scratch and do everything the way that I wanted to do it or the way that our company would want to do it. And unfortunately, that's just the reality in the dev world. Most of the work that you're going to do is going to be on somebody else's code base. In fact, the company that I work for, a lot of times we have people bringing other projects that another company has started and maybe it went well, maybe it didn't go well, but they're bringing it to us to either fix or to enhance uh, the, the functionality of it. And so you'll find that most places that you go, whether it's building websites or whether it's building web applications or whether it's building video games or all kinds of things, you're gonna end up working on stuff that somebody else has already started. You're gonna be jumping into a project that somebody else has already started. And that can be very intimidating for junior developers because you're used to just kind of starting from scratch and getting a, a, a set of instructions and then you, you build that little thing. Well, now you've got to start building things within the parameters that somebody else set, that somebody else already started. And not only that, but you've got to understand what actually is going on in that code. So you need to understand that not every project that you're gonna have as a developer is going to be a greenfield or gonna be a, a brand new project. You need to understand that the vast majority of the work that you're gonna do is gonna be based on somebody else's work ahead of you. See, on my first contracting job, I actually had to learn two JavaScript frameworks in order to not only do the work that I was required to do, but also be able to understand what it was that we were doing. And in fact, I didn't get to just learn those JavaScript frameworks and build these little things on the side, I had to learn those frameworks while building stuff inside a very large project. 
But the great thing was I was able to do that because I was used to digging into other people's code. I have, I had worked on multiple projects that were brought to my company by that time. And I had worked in and, and learned how to, how to sift through projects and understand what code was doing and, and figure out how things worked. So I was able to jump into these projects and learn a brand new JavaScript framework along the way, because I had this skill of being able to just jump into a project, figure it out and move forward. And that's what having this skill set will do for you. It will help you be able to learn code faster, not just learning new frameworks or learning new languages, but it will actually help you learn how to get into other projects faster. It will, it will make it faster and faster and faster over time. You'll get to where you can just jump into pretty much any project and figure it out, even figuring out different languages. One day I was actually asked to take a look at a project that was written in .NET. I don't know .NET. <laughs> I don't need, I don't know anything about it really, but because I was used to jumping into code, because I was used to just digging into a project and figuring out how things worked, I was able to actually fix the bug that was going on and, and figure out how to compile it. And I pushed it up to where it was supposed to go and, and everything worked. <laughs> and that really is the last beautiful thing about being able to just jump into code, no matter whether it's a greenfield project or whether it's something that's been around forever is you get exposure to a lot of other things that you probably wouldn't have tried otherwise. See, we all come to this development world pursuing specific things. There's certain things that we enjoy. There's certain things that we like. We may be a, a React developer or maybe a Laravel developer. Or you may be a C-sharp developer, all these different types of things that might be your thing. But depending on where you work, there might come a time where you need to change directions because the company needs you to do something else. And if you're not used to digging into code, to, to learning new things along the way, if you're not used to just jumping in and figuring things out, then you could get left behind or you could get let go because you don't have the skill set necessary to do the things that the company needs you to do. But if you do have that skill set, if you are able to jump in, you'll get exposed to a lot of other things that you otherwise may not have chosen to get exposed to, but that exposure will help expand your horizons for potentially future roles in that company or future roles outside that company. Let me just be clear, being able to list lots of different languages and frameworks and things like that on your resume is a real boost to your career. Recruiters look at that, companies look at that, and they see a lot of different ways that they could use you. It opens up the types of jobs that you can work. So developing this skill of being able to jump into an existing code base, understand it, and, and continue working in it is important because you're not always going to have greenfield projects. It's important because it's going to expose you to lots of other things that'll help your career in the long run. And it always, and it also forces you to learn new things quickly. It makes you a better learner along the way. Hey, if you find this information helpful, could you click the like button for me? I'd greatly appreciate it. If, and if you're not subscribed, click the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you're notified the next time I upload a video. Okay, so how can we practically get better at being able to jump into code and, and learn it and understand it and move forward and be proactive and being able to be a part of a development team, be, be successful in adding or subtracting or changing the code that is already there? Well, for me, the first step is to learn how to follow the logic. You need to get into code that's already existing. Maybe that's a, a GitHub project that you like that's out there or maybe it's a project from a friend of yours, get into that code and see if you can follow the logic. Take a look at the front end, see something that's happening on the front end. Follow that from the front end to the back end. See what the back end code is doing. See how it's storing that information in the database. See how it's pulling that information out. Follow the logic because that is really going to be the key to debugging code. It's going to be the key to understanding how all the different pieces of code work. That's the important thing that you've really got to understand. You've got to learn to follow the trail of the code. Another thing that you could do is get a popular GitHub repo and take a look at the bug list and look through, look for something that looks like it's maybe something that you could tackle and jump in, pull down that repository and jump into it. See if you can figure out what's causing the bug. See if you can figure out a way to fix the bug. And who knows, maybe you can even push up a pull request and, 
and actually change something in that code. But that's a huge part of being a developer is, is finding bugs, not just finding bugs in the things that you wrote, but finding bugs that were already existing in the code that either they didn't know were there or that they knew were there and nobody's just found a solution for it yet. Third way to get better at this is to find a project, whether that's again, a GitHub project, or maybe it's a friend's project and just jump into it and look for a way to add some functionality. Maybe you talk to your friend, you say, what's, what's something that you're wanting to add to your project? And, and you decide I'm going to do that. I'm going to jump into this code base that I've never seen before. And I'm going to figure out how to add this feature to this project. And the more you do that, the more you work with someone else's code, the easier it's going to be for you to do that more and more and more. And eventually you'll get to a point where really you're a senior level developer because you've just been in so many different code bases. You've seen so many different things. You've got a lot of knowledge and a lot of experience simply by dealing with somebody else's code. I know we really don't like dealing with other people's code. We'd rather take a project and, and tell people, no, that's a terrible code base and you shouldn't use that. Let me build you something from scratch. Every developer wants to build something from scratch, but the reality is most projects are not building from scratch. And if you want to be a developer long-term, if you want to build a good career, a, a long lasting career, a high paying career, you need to be a developer who's able to jump into the code no matter who wrote it, figure it out and make it better. Hey, I hope this video has been a help to you or an encouragement to you in your journey as a junior developer. Thanks for spending time with me today and I'll see you on the next one.